Hey, 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 everybody, welcome to the channel. My name is Lobo. The channel is called ZooPF Visual Effects. Guys, this is a visual effects channel. For those of you who are new to the channel, if you have the opportunity to look at my other videos on the channel and you dig, guys, you know what to do like and sub it helps the channel grow for those of you who are returnees thank you so much for still being here with me i appreciate all you guys and i love all you guys all right let's get down to business this is part three of our four part series that will help us build this simple ship right here we're just trying to reduplicate this ship and so far we have this right here Although this one looks way beefier than this one, I think when I'm done with this, I'm equally going to put it on CG Trader for sale for a cheap price, okay? Now, the last time we left it as it looked just like this, okay? And I went ahead and put some windows wherever I felt like the windows needed to be. I made sure that the windows would look pretty cool and I did the same thing for this part, the control tower too, okay? Now, what I also did with this ship is I unwrapped it completely so that it would be ready to go, which takes us to what is unwrapping since this third tutorial is all about trying to understanding unwrapping as best as possible. Okay. So the best way for me to describe it to you guys is to show it to you. So instead of just blabbering my way around and you being absolutely confused, let's just go straight into our UV editing tab. And this is the texture that I use for this cube right here. As you can see on the cube, it looks pretty cool. So I have a texture of the rocks. I have a normal texture and some ambient occlusion texture, which gives this flat surface some depth, but it is fake because it is just an illusion because everything is still flat. Okay. But the illusion looks pretty cool. That being said, what is unwrapping? Well, let me show you to you right now. So I'm going to click on my cube and then I'm going to go into edit mode. And once I am here, you can see that the cube has been unwrapped. When we are talking about unwrapping a 3D mesh, we are simply talking about cutting specific edges on your 3D mesh that will enable you to open the mesh open. So think of it as a flower when it's not bloomed. And when the flower is bloomed, it's wide open. And when it's wide open, you can see all the faces of the flower. It's the same thing with the 3D mesh. As you guys can see, this is the full cube. And when you unwrap it, it is wide open, just like this. But here's the best part. You've been doing this all your life. As kids, I'm sure you probably did it too. We used to draw cubes or, you know, spheres or all types of three dimensional shapes. And then you would cut them out and then you would simply fold each faces to create the shape that you wanted. You've been unwrapping since you were a kid. So that's crazy, right? So because you've been unwrapping since you guys were kids, here's my tip number one when it comes to unwrapping 3D meshes. Follow your intuition. Your intuition already knows what to do. So don't fight your brain when you unwrap a mesh. Follow your intuition. It already knows where to put the cut and then simply put the cut there. And when you're done, you should have something like this for a cube, for example, but for a more complicated 3d uh, model like this, it will look completely different. Okay. And so when you unwrap the cube, then go here and play with these tools and see what they do. Okay. Because this is not blender one one it's just tutorials to show you guys quickly how to create this ship, but hands on because hands on is the best way to learn. Take your time and check out all these. But the one that you'll use the most is this one right here. Because with this now, if I want, I can make the shape more square looking, which means more one by one. And then I can also decide where I want to move my texture by simply moving this around. Okay. And this is the really cool part about this whole entire thing here. This is what you can do. And as you guys can see, when I move it around, it also moves my texture up there. Okay. And that's the beautiful part of this. Now, this is the simplest way of texturing. Okay. But when you unwrap your mesh, you are giving yourself that power of flexibility. And so if you don't have to do anything in Blender, unwrap your mesh because it is obvious that you will be taking your 3d model into a different software to do some visual effects or to do something or if you're selling your 3d models 
you have to unwrap your mesh for your customers. Okay. Now, again, what is the only time you will never have to unwrap any meshes? If you're creating a visual effects scene in Blender, for example, then all you have to do is use Blender's procedural system of texturing, and you can texture every single little models that you create and keep everything in Blender without having ever had to ever unwrap any 3D models that you created. Okay, that would be the only time you would never have to unwrap. But if you're not doing that, you will have to unwrap every 3D models that you create. So if you create something very complex, be ready to unwrap that. Or you can unwrap as you create, but then that would mean that your 3D modeling skills would have to be extremely amazing to unwrap as you 3D model, okay? All right, now that that has been said, I hope that you understand this first part of this tutorial. That is just what unwrapping is, right? You see, it was not that bad, wasn't it? All right, guys, that takes care of part one. All right, guys, this is part two of tutorial number three. Hopefully you guys understood part one. I kept it so simple and showing you guys at the same time while explaining to you guys that I hope you understood it, but I have a great feeling that you actually understood it pretty well. Now, in this part two of this tutorial, we are definitely going to unwrap a cube together. Unwrap unwrapping the cube will help you make sense of it even better before you go crazy with the ship, okay? So, this is what you should be seeing right now. You don't have this, but you have this. And because you have this, just put it to the side so that we can use the center here for our cube, okay? Make sure you know, you are on object mode and then go to add, then go to mesh and go to cube from here i'm going to click on my scale because i want to make this way bigger so it's easier for us to see what we're doing and from here very 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 simple now you guys don't have to be at the ev mode that i am you guys can stay at this mode here and in fact let's just go ahead and stay at this mode so that it's easier for you guys to see what i'm doing okay now let's go ahead and unwrap this mess together now remember, unwrapping the mesh is simply cutting the edges out so that some edges are connected and some are not, all right? So go ahead and look at this cube here. I'm gonna pivot around this cube and I just want you to look at it. And again, do not fight your brain. Your brain already knows what to do. It already knows where to put the cuts because you've been doing it all of your life, especially as children, when you were creating these very cool three dimensional shapes using flat paper. Okay, now that you, you already know where you're gonna put the cuts, let's make sure that we go into our edit mode. And when you are here, make sure that you are on your edge mode and let's go ahead and put our cuts. So. I'm assuming I'm going to be you. And in your mind, you probably told yourself, maybe this side and that side need to fall downwards. And you were correct. And you probably thought too, that either this side or that side would have to fall downwards too. And then at one point, either this side or that side or this side and this side would have to unfold outwards, right? Because well, you remember when you were a kid, that's how you built the cube shape you had that almost human looking square, two arms, one body and one head, right? So your brain already told you that that's how you're going to cut it. And so again, follow your intuition. It already knows what to do. And so we're gonna follow intuition. My intuition is telling me right now, I need to put a cut right here and then click shift on your keyboard. And then I'm gonna put another one here and then I'm gonna put another one here because I want this side to fall downwards and then I also want this side to fall downwards so I have to do the same exact thing. And when you are here, all you have to do is go to UV and mark seam. Every time you mark a seam, it's gonna look red and that's telling Blender that you have chosen this edge to be cut, okay? and this edge when it is marked it is called a seam okay now that we have this let's go into our uv editing tab 
and you should have this right now. If you don't have this right now, it's because up here you are on a different mode. You might be on this mode here, okay? Which is the same here, or you might be on any other different mode. The one you wanna be on is UV Editor, okay? So make sure you are on UV Editor. All right, I assume that you've changed it or it already was on it right away because as soon as you go to UV editing, it automatically takes you here. Now, click any of the face and just click A. Okay, now that you have this, I want you guys to go, now yours probably will look like this. I want you guys to go up here to this section and just move it out, okay? And once you move it out, just click on any of these. And the view is the one you want. And once you are here, go to overlays, click here and click on stretching. Now, stretching will allow to tell you what face is stretched because if your one of your faces is stretched, when you put a texture on it, it's going to look horrible, okay? every colors need to be a blue color even if it's this color it's still okay as long as it's in that blue color looking zone area but if you have any colors that look green or they don't look blue at all then that's when your unwrapping is not looking good okay so one thing is for sure we know that some faces are sharing the same space and because of that we have that pretty horrible looking thing going on right there and we want everything to be more like this okay more like that right there so let's go around and look at our cube again you know by looking at the cube you know what needs to happen so just look around the cube and don't fight your brain your intuition already knows what to do follow your intuition so again, assuming to be you, you probably have told yourself, okay, since both my arms have fallen downwards, I need to make sure that either this side or that side is the head. So just choose which other side you want. And from there, you're probably telling yourself, okay, so when I cut this way, that way, and that way, this whole thing fell downward that way because this was not cut, which means I need to put another one here as well. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. So when you click here and then go to UV and go to Mark Scene, what's gonna happen is click A now to select everything and there you go. You have officially unwrapped this cube, but here's the caveat. The last three versions of Blender have already empowered anyone using Blender to unwrap the meshes by itself without you having to do it, okay? And because of that, every meshes that you create, every 3D models you create will auto automatically be unwrapped already. And when they are unwrapped, they will, they will be unwrapped extremely properly, 100% blue. But the bad thing about this is they will all be unwrapped in this cross shape which means a lot of faces will be laying on top of one another. Perfectly done, but laying on top of one another, which means when it comes time to texturing, it is going to be an absolute nightmare. Now, if you're doing something very simple, it's cool because Blender did it for you, so you don't have to worry about that. But if you're constructing and modeling a shape like this, trust me, it's not cool. And you're gonna have to do everything by hand, okay? And when you do things by hand, this is pretty much how it would be. It would not be unwrapped by itself like this. What needs to happen is you need to click U. And as you click U, this part right here was not clicked, right? You can see it too, right? It was not clicked. Now click on it so it has that check mark because now every single time you put a seam on a mesh it will automatically unwrap by itself because it's also telling blender that you're doing it manually so you have full control of the unwrapping 
so that it will never be this shape. It will be a completely different shape every time you put a seam in any edges of your 3D modeling, okay? So remember, as you put seam, click on U, the letter U, and then make sure that this is checked. Once it's checked, it will unwrap itself by itself every time you put a seam somewhere on your 3D mesh. Hopefully that made sense, okay? So, not so bad after all, huh? Pretty easy, isn't it? I know. Okay guys, that takes care of part two of this section here. All right guys, in this third part, we are gonna deepen our understanding of unwrapping and then we're gonna check out my ship and how it's supposed to look like for you. Now, another thing I wanna show you guys is now that you know that when you unwrap, everything's supposed to be blue, there's another way to make sure to check on your unwrapping so that it, it is ready for texturing, okay? And I'm gonna show you that right now. So when you are here, make sure you go into object mode. And then, so we were, you were in any of these, perhaps you were in, make sure you go to this icon right here, okay? When you are on this icon, go to the plus sign, click on it. Now, this tells us we are about to put a material on our 3D model. And yes, we do by clicking new. Once you click new, the material has been applied to the 3D mesh. And that's exactly what we want. Once we are here, go to your base color and click on it. And let's just give it a gray color and go to your subsurface color, click on it, grab the eyedrop, click on that. And then go to viewport display, color, eyedrop, boom. Okay, now base color, subsurface color, and view disport, view disport, viewport display, they're all connected to these three tabs here, okay? Each of these tab is one of these. So that every time you switch from one to the other, guess what? That material is with the your 3D mesh, okay? It's something that is, if you don't do it that way, um, you'll see it. When you have a whole bunch of stuff going on in your scene and you did not, you forgot to put the colors in, you're gonna be wanting to, you know, punch yourself in the face. <laughs> so make sure you do that, okay? Once we are here, we need to click on this icon here and then go down to Shader Editor. In Shader Editor, as soon as you apply the material, this came up, okay? And in the Shader Editor, it is where you will do all of your texturing, especially your procedural texturing, okay? Now, I want you guys to go to Add, and I simply want you guys to go to Search, click on it, and just type in CH. The checker texture came through, and then click on that and bring that here, align the color with the base color here and just bring it over and tag it. Once you tag it, as you guys can see here, we have some checkerboards here going on on this cube here. Now, this tactic has been used for eons when it came to texturing, which told the 3D modeling artists that they're unwrapping really good. So if you look at this checkboard here, everything is on point. There are no breakage of any seams. Everything is nice and looking good. Well, of course it should because this is a cube. On a cube, everything is already pretty equal. It's a one by one, right? So it's equal. But on something like this, it's gonna look very different. And so what are we looking for? We're looking for any seams that are broken. So nothing is broken. It looks really good. And because it looks really good, you did a pretty good job unwrapping this 3D mesh. Nice work. All right, that's what I wanted to show you. Now, let's go ahead and move to my ship here. There's two things we're gonna be looking at, the ship and the control tower. So I'm going to move my control tower over here. I'm gonna shift it back to this, and I'm gonna go back over here and simply go to uh, UV editor. And let's look at how your ship is supposed to look like. So if we click on the ship, remember that, uh, let me double check here really quick. On your modifiers, you have not clicked apply yet, okay? If you've clicked apply, 
you've just doubled your work, which is not a smart thing to do. When it comes to 3D modeling, you want to work smart, not work harder. Okay. So don't click on that yet. And I'll tell you why. Now go to edit mode. Anything that you do on one side will be applied to the other. That's what the mirror modifier is all about, which means if you're unwrapping on this side, you guessed it. The other side has been unwrapped as well. That's why you don't click this yet. Modifiers are working smarter, not harder. Okay. And so if you can do anything with a modifier, I highly advise you to do that. Okay. Now, if I simply grab any of my face on my uh, spaceship here and I click a on my keyboard, as you guys can see now, your ship, when you unwrap it should look something like this. Now, mind you that this is only one side that has been unwrapped. When I click apply, this will double in size because then it will apply the other side as well. Okay. But so far it's looking pretty good. Remember we're looking for 80% blue colors and the, if the rest is not blue, it's more like this color, then it's still okay. But if it's super green, then it's not okay. I checked these out. And I know for a fact it's okay because I quickly put a texture and it still came out pretty good. Okay. So to me, this looks pretty good. All right. And I dig and I'm happy with the result of my unwrapping here. Now let's look at the tower now. And the tower looks even better than the ship. Everything is pretty good. So I have about 95% looking blue and the rest is a lighter blue, which is fine. Okay. There you go. That's for the tower. And so now if we go back to the ship, we're going to zoom in into the ship. So you guys can see exactly how the unwrapping works for the ship. All right. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to move this over here. So I give myself more room. So let's take a look around now. Again, your brain already knows how to do this. Don't fight it. Follow your intuition. You've been doing this your whole life when you were creating very cool uh, 3D shapes with 2D paper and flat. So all I'm doing right now is simply showing you guys where my seams are at to help you understand why, where, not why I'm sorry, but where you believe you should also put your seams. Now you can copy my seams, but it might look horrible when you unwrap it. This is why you need to on this part, you need to do it yourself. You've already done the cube. You already know how to follow your intuition for the cube. You already know what to look for. You want everything to look blue. And to double check your work, you'll put a checkerboard on the material that you've applied to your 3D mesh to make sure everything is on point. Okay, now let's take a look at the tower. Now, of course I fixed my windows for the tower because since I am going to put this for sale, I want to make sure that my customers are happy with the end results. Sorry about the zooming and orbiting. There it is much better. All right, now let's go back to the ship and simply click away. All right, guys, hopefully you guys understood part three 
as part three was more uh, an extension of part two but also give you guys a look at how your ship is supposed to look like when you unwrap it okay now again this is a part that you're gonna have to do on your own but you've already practiced it with the cube and you know what to look for follow your intuition and trust me you will be able to figure it out okay and that takes care of part three of the section all right guys this concludes this tutorial right here now the two main big things to take away from this whole entire tutorial is number one unwrapping simply means opening up a 3d model that you created by putting specific cuts on edges okay that's pretty much it and this will empower you to put a texture on it that will make sure that each face has that one by one texture look that is not stretched all right and the second big thing to take away is follow your intuition when it comes to unwrapping you've been doing it since you were a kid you know how to do this don't fight your brain follow your intuition and put a seam where your brain is telling you to put the seam and then simply remember to click U on your keyboard put that check mark on that bottom section and then it will unwrap automatically for you okay you don't want a blender to give you its automatic unwrap because remember guys it's just that t-shape and it's gonna look horrible when it comes to your ship you're gonna have to do it by yourself manually and you also can fast forward, pause, or rewind when I was showing you guys my unwrapping of my ship to give you an idea where you should put the scene. But the reason why I want you guys to do it by yourselves is so that you have 100% an understanding of where the unwraps have to go. This is the best way to learn. The one thing I wish that all tutorials would have taught me when it was unwrapping is the second point that I just told you to follow my intuition. None of them said that because they didn't say that I was fighting my brain but now you know for a fact that your intuition is pretty much right when it comes to unwrapping okay all right guys that concludes everything I hope you found this tutorial helpful if it was helpful kill that like button pass this video to your friends and share with them how easy it was for you to learn from one two three and you feel really confident with your skills right now and they should check out the video too make sure you sub to the channel have all your friends sub to my channel let's grow the channel together so i can do more of these tutorials for you guys okay i have other channels that's why i spend my time creating videos for those channels too and when i get to this channel here then i want to make sure whatever i create is meaningful to you guys too okay thank you so much guys and i will see you guys on the next tutorial bye bye now